So I predicted that there's going to be a cloud inversion later today, so I'm climbing up the highest mountain here in Hong Kong, Time Ocean, to see if I can photograph it. And the question now is, how? Let's just see how the day unfolds and I'm going to show you the process. This is incredible, it's actually happening. <laughs> the city is just covered with clouds right now, it's a sea of fog, I mean, look at this. Would you look at that view? Let me just play around with all the photos and then I'll see you in a bit. There are a few things you need to know about cloud inversions. The first one is a temperature inversion and the second one is the dew point. A temperature inversion is just a weather pattern where the air gets warmer as you go up in altitude, which is opposite in what you normally see. That is why it's called an inversion. The second one is the dew point, which is the point where air carrying water vapor will start to condense and form mist or fog. And when you have a temperature inversion, the cold air being trapped underneath that layer of warm air at the top will start to form mist or fog when the temperature hits below the dew point, creating this magical view of the sea of clouds forming very, very heavenly. And we photographers would want to be there so that we can capture that moment. And then you can send those photos to your crush and say, hey, is this what heaven looks like? Or do I need to stand beside you instead? So the Hong Kong Observatory is quite thoughtful for photographers where they provide a chart which graphs the air temperature and the dew point by altitude. And if you see where the red and the blue line will intersect and have an inflection point, you will have an idea of what altitude you should be so that you can stand above this sea of clouds. And if you're not in Hong Kong, then we have other sources where we can look for, which I'll get to in a bit. So for example, the forecast last night shows an inflection point around 500 meters and the two lines are close to each other, although ideally you'd want them intersecting. But this chart is not updated frequently, it only updates twice a day. So there is still some room for interpretation. I'm pleased that I climbed up before sunrise and was able to capture the silhouette of Lion Rock, a famous mountain in Hong Kong being illuminated by the city lights below and framed by the cloud inversion. I also like the wide-angle version to show the movement of the stars above, and I then stack the images together and form this star trails photograph. I just took my time admiring the city view and waited for some light before we talk about another weather app I use, so make sure to stick around for that. Okay, so the fog dissipated for a little bit, so I'm going to wait for the sunrise and see if the fog will roll back in during the light. But if not, at least I see the sunrise today. Oh, I'm really loving this scene behind me. You can see the fog rolling in over the landscape. And I'm using a bit of a long exposure to smoothen out that roll in. <laughs> then you can see the sun rising behind and the color is just magical. <laughs> And I, oh, I can even see that there's more over there. <laughs> so glad I went out today. So another app which I find very useful and I've shared this before is called Clear Outside. So Clear Outside will have hourly forecasts of a lot of the weather parameters, including the essentials for cloud inversion. So there's going to be forecasts for the temperature and the dew point. And as mentioned a while ago, when the difference between these two measures are below zero, then the sea of clouds will start to develop. And this will be reflected in the fog layer and the low clouds layer of Clear Outside. Then there's also two other parameters that you want to look for, which is the humidity and and the wind speed. So you want humidity to be on the higher range because there's going to be more water vapor increasing the chances of more clouds to form. And for the wind, you want this to be as slow as possible because when those clouds form, you don't want them to be blown away by strong wind. You want them to stay put as much as possible. So for the forecast today, it looks quite promising during the sunrise. And that's going to be seen in the landscapes around me. It's completely covered with these cloud inversions. So I've been talking a lot today about temperatures and dew point, but you know what else is dew? Subscribing. But kidding aside, if you found these tips helpful, then I would appreciate if you can like and subscribe so this video can spread to more people. The view is very magical right now, so let's just take the sunrise. What a day. The fog is just all over the place. I really like how this viewing point from Taimo Shan, you can see all the layers in the landscape. 
and because of all the fog rolling in, it creates more depth in the scene. So there's a lot more visual flow going on in these images. Huh, the sun is rising up now. If you are going out to photograph the sunrise, then I would suggest for you to arrive your location earlier. It's not just to give yourself additional time in finding compositions for your image, but the mood and vibrance of the colors are a lot different before and after the sunrise as well. So lately I've been thinking, I have a lot of good photos, but I don't have a lot of great photos. And the common denominator that separated the great photos from my good photos it was actually the weather or the atmosphere that I was trying to capture. So I do think in photography, there's no such thing as bad weather. There's challenging weather, but with the appropriate composition in the right location, you can still create something stunning. So I think for this year, I need to improve my weather prediction skills so that I can choose the right locations and compositions to accompany those weather conditions, regardless of how challenging they can be. Good food for thought, huh? As the sun rose up, the sea of clouds below the landscapes persisted. I really enjoyed photographing the contrast of the landscape silhouettes and the golden color of the sky, supported by the cloud inversion. It was also a practice in finding pleasing compositions that balance the scene, which I think I accomplished by shooting the repeated layers created by the mountain ranges and the fog. The visibility was so good and I was surprised I got to capture the second and third tallest mountains in Hong Kong in one frame. Of course, I also had to come away with an epic self-portrait. I think I've already taken the photos that I wanted to take for today and I'm glad I was able to share this magical view and experience with all of you. So thanks for watching and see you again in the next video.